<laughs> There's so many fish out there. But this time I just left the waggler out there, five, three or four pellets around the float. The lake behind me is Loco. It's a very well-known lake. It's here on the fabulous Lindome Lakes Complex. This lake's slightly different from some of the other lakes on the complex, but I'm here today. I'm gonna to be fishing with a pellet waggler. I'm also gonna be fishing with a method feeder as well. And today it's really about carp, but I think we might catch some F1s as well. I've deliberately not asked too many questions about this lake and about how it's fishing just because I just didn't know what to expect and I like it that way. We don't really know what's going to happen. I'm going to kick off with the pellet waggler, that's the main approach, pinging some 8mm pellets out there into the open water. If that works that's great, if not I've also got a small method feeder set up where I can drop that onto that line as well and fish over those loose fed pellets. In the second part of the session I'm then going to target my right hand margin where there's a little bit of weed and I'm sure we might catch some bigger fish down there towards the second part of the session. The bait tray is really, really simple. All we've got some 8mm fishery pellets. You've got to use fishery pellets here. So they are hard 8 mils, not soaked or anything. They're the ones that I'm going to be pinging. There we go. And then we've got some micros, okay. And they again are obviously fishery pellets. These have been soaked just for a few minutes, that's all. Um, I haven't added anything to these, so they are just straight out of the bag having been soaked. So there's no sort of glugs or anything like that on there. And they're what I'm going to be moulding around the feeder a little bit later on. So all I'm going to be doing is just experimenting whether it's going to be best to feed first and then cast over the top of it, or what the best um, the best way of feeding the swim is going to be. There are a few fish cruising around out there, so I know there are fish out there. Just hopefully they're going to come to these pellets. Keep seeing the odd fish rising out there, so there are some fish out there. Fast bite there. <laughs> Just felt a bump on the rod. So that's good. I know there's one or two fish out there, so now it's just going to be a case of just trying to figure it out, trying to figure out the best way of feeding the swim. Well, that's the first sign in about 20 minutes of constantly feeding. I've just been varying the way that I'm feeding and the amount this one I actually caught by just leaving the waggler out there and feeding the pellets around the float. Normally I like to feed and then put the waggler in the middle of it and then, you know, catch fish that way. Looks like a big F1. But this time I just left the waggler out there, fired three or four pellets around the float, did that about six times and then it's just gone. So that might be the best way of catching them at this early stage. He's a chunky F1 here, much bigger than I thought. There we go. Took some catching, but wet it. Really heavy fish, that one. So the pellet waggler setup is really dead simple. A 3000 reel, I've got this on the um, 11 foot um, Horizon Pro waggler rod. I've got six pound Horizon mainline and that is just straight attached to one of the pellet waggler attachments. These just enable me to change the depth constantly. Fishing like this, you know, you want to find the right depth that the fish are at and these enable you to do that and they don't damage the line either. There's one at the top, that's obviously to stop the float, but then there are three below the float and that's obviously because when you're casting in, the weight of the waggler can force just one of those to slip but in this case, as you can see with these attachments, you've got three there which help hold it in place. I can constantly change the depth, as you can see. And because I've got a short hook length on as well, I can really fish as shallow as about eight inches deep with this rig. So um, that should give me enough flexibility to find out exactly what depth the fish are feeding at.
Well, these fish are proving really, really tricky today. Really tricky. I know what F1s can be like. There are fish everywhere out there. They're rolling behind the float, round the feed area, but I cannot get a bite in that feed area. I've just had a couple of bites casting away from the feed. So what I'm doing is I'm just continually feeding that main area and I'm just literally casting the waggler around it in the open water just trying to pick off fish almost not mugging them because I can't see them um, obviously the sun's not out and the, the, the white water's not allowing me to, to pinpoint fish but I know they're there I keep seeing them roll around the feed so I'm just going to keep feeding this this area and hopefully they're going to come onto it and get a little bit more confident if I don't keep casting the float into it they might build up a little bit of confidence so that you know when they do get that confidence then we can cast back into that main area and hopefully put together a run of fish but at the moment um, I'm just really just casting the waggler around the swim just trying to pick off any sort of stray fish but at the moment the carp and the F1s are definitely winning it's been about 15 minutes since I went into that feed area so I'm just going to cast in the middle of it now see if we can trick one on <laughs> one's just come out of the water about that far away from the float and again there are fish out there, loads of fish out there. <laughs> there are so many fish out there. <laughs> that literally went over the float. Incredible. Got that one. I've just gone really shallow. Well, it's probably the shallowest I've fished with a pellet waggler, to be honest. It was just driving me mad that I couldn't get a fish when it could blatantly see that there were so many fish out there. It's one of those occasions when you've got to believe they're there because you can see them, even though you cannot get a bite. So I've shallowed right up now. I don't know what this is actually, it was coming in like a bream, but I think it's an F1. So I've gone really shallow now. This is um, second cast at that new depth. So whether that's actually worked it out, the, the fish are you know in that depth I don't know or maybe it's just you know what it's like sometimes you make a change you catch fish straight away and then you don't catch on it again but it's quite a chunky fish certainly worth uh, make, ringing the changes for but yeah that's the shallowest I've been so let's see if they're at that depth they're still there they're only there when I feed which is interesting you can see them kind of coming out of the water, the back's coming out of the water. But when I stop feeding, they just, you know, stop doing that or they move further out into the lake. So I'm confident that the feed is bringing them in, into that area, and they've got to be taking the pellets. So maybe I was just fishing a little bit too deep. The funny thing is, when you think you're fishing too deep with a pellet waggler, just like when you're pole fishing, you think you'd be getting line bites and that sort of thing if your rig was too long or you were too deep. But that wasn't the case. Just putting three pellets at a time. Like I say, I'm just constantly varying that rate that I'm feeding, but I haven't really worked that out yet. But hopefully this new depth might be, uh, might trick one or two fish onto the hook. There we go, straight away that one. That's the fastest bite I've had that. That was just casting on top of the three pellets. Well, I put three in and then three again. And as you saw that went straight away as soon as it hit the surface the sun's trying to break through now as well a good chunky fish in here i can see how they rack up those big weights there we go lovely fish we might have worked it out Right, well it's that time of day now, I need to prime that margin line. I've still got fish out there on the waggle line, but I need to set this up ready for when I drop on it. Obviously timing's a big issue when you're feeding your margins, and that's why I haven't fed it from the start. I don't think it's gonna take long to prime, 
but I'm going to feed it a good half an hour before I actually go on it. Now one of the things I've been asked recently is about feeding rods. Lots of people have feeding rods for boshing volumes of bait in, close in or on a feeder line. That's what we have to do in feeder only competitions, we can't introduce bait by hand. However, when you're having to fish with a free running feeder like the one I've got today, quite often other people have had to set up another rod just specifically for feeding as a feeding rod now that's great that's you know if you can do that and you've got the time to do it and you want to do it that's brilliant however not everybody's got the luxury of a separate rod to do that now one thing with free running rigs is it's not like an elasticated feeder where you can just unclip the feeder and then clip on a feeding feeder like the one i'm going to use today because it's a free running rig so one way you can get around this and it's one way that i uh, I do it quite often where you've got to use free running rigs is with the, this sort of a system like what we've got here this is obviously the matrix system what we can actually do is if I just slide that off I can slide the weight off okay so that's the actual feeder so you're just left with the stem now what you can actually do is your quick change adapter here or your hook length adapter or quick change bead if you want to call it that what we can actually do is with a feeder like this you can actually loop the feeder into the loop of where your hook length goes, like that. Slide that back over the top. Slide that down and there we go. Yes, it doesn't look very pretty, but that is gonna allow you to use this same rod for actually feeding down this margin. And it means that, you know, you can leave that set up like that until you're ready to go onto that line to fish it so you can leave that set up like that so you can top your line up as many times as you wish before you go on it and then when the time comes to actually fish it you can simply just take your feeder off like so clip your hook length on and then you can slide the actual weight of the feeder back on and away you go it just means you're cutting down on the amount of kit that you're carrying and it just keeps everything really nice and simple so all i'm going to do now is feed this margin line so if I take that off, slide that down so it's nice and neat, I'm going to put that feeder back on. And what I'm going to feed down this margin is micro pellets and corn. Simple as that, nothing else. We know micro pellets, they're used to those and they all know what corn is and corn is a nice, I think it's a great margin bait, you know, even when you're pole fishing, the same thing. All right, so all I'm going to do is just get the, the feeder into the corn like that and then I'm just going to cap it off with micro pellets no need to pack it in too tight because you know i'm only going to be under norm in it down the margin so we want it to empty immediately okay and i'm going to put three of those in and then give it at least half an hour First carp of the day, that one. I'd love to say I've fed exactly where I want to feed every time, but I haven't. With the wind, it's it's all over the place a little bit today, so the best way has really been to just to fire the pellets out and where the grouping of the pellets is, it's much better to cast the waggler to where that grouping is instead of kind of feeding to where your waggler's going to go, if that makes sense. like that <laughs> well different species now i think we've got a chub there we go rubber dub dub that's not a bad nuisance fish is it <laughs> look at that fantastic fishing Well, I've got to admit, I've never had um, a session where the fish have been as tricky as what they are today. I've literally just sat for five minutes, just feeding pellets, put the rod down, 
I don't know what this is, if it's a proper carp this one, it's much slower this one. Um, I've literally for five minutes just fed pellets, just like you would do if you were going to rest the line and fish somewhere else. I haven't done that today, obviously it's not a match. And I've gone over the top of it and I've had a bite, missed it, then that's been it. Not other than the bite. So I've sat down again, another five minutes, just feeding. Cast the waggler over the top and it's gone. It's absolutely solid with fish out there. There are fish rolling everywhere. They're all around the feed. So they're obviously coming to the feed and I'm sure they're eating the pellets I'm putting in. But I've never known fish so tricky. And just that little change in depth, just shallowing up that little bit more, only by a few inch, it's gone from no fish to, uh, this is about number 12, I think. So they're not going mad, but it's absolutely full of fish out there. But we're just gonna net this one. That's it, another chunky F1. And now it's time to go down this margin line. I primed it about half an hour ago. I haven't seen any signs of fish there. I'm hoping the fish aren't gonna be quite as tricky on that line. We might even catch proper carp on that line. So I'm gonna put this fish back and see if we can catch down this margin. Now the method feeder rig is simplicity in itself, just like always. I've decided to start on an inter size feeder. Okay, it doesn't hold too much bait. It's just a nice size, it's 20 gram. Gotta be free running. All right, that complies with fishery rules. Simple as that and a nice quick change adapter there so I can constantly keep changing. The hook length if I want to swap between a band or um, some form of a bayonet or a speed stop. And that is it, really, really simple. And the reel setup and rod is a 3000 reel. I've got eight pound main line on that. And this is the 10 foot commercial feeder that I'm using. The reason why I'm using eight pound line is because yes, it's durable, but I also intend on using this setup for when I go down the margin. So the eight pound line is just gonna make sure it's a little bit more durable for when I'm fishing close to features. That didn't take long. <laughs> Very good. I was just on a single grain of corn. Obviously that's what I've been putting in. Mainly micro pellets. Just one bit of corn, the hooks come out in the net. It's just on a on a speed stop. Brilliant, that wasn't in long, was it? Great big F1. Really solid, confident take, no messing about. No line bites, nothing, just a, well you saw it. Brilliant. Quite a few indications that time as you could see the tips just rattling sometimes you think they're small fish but they could be f1s that are just taking the those micro pellets but then obviously when it went there was no mistake in it it was on another heavy fish it's a heavy fish that one you see how you can rack up these weights down these margins later on, especially when they're coming in in less than a minute. And if you've got them lined up, if you go on it at the right time, hopefully it's not going to be in there long either. Beautiful condition. I'm not going to top it up with a cage or anything because, you know, with a method feeder, it's self feeding. Every time I drop it in, there's a load of pellets there. So I'll just catch like that for as long as I can. If it goes quiet and we think the fish have moved out of the peg, then I will set it up again with the, you know, I'll put that, that big cage on again and put a couple of those in with some corn and then just rest it 
before going back on, on it again. Well, it's safe to say that they're uh, lined up now. Obviously we primed it, but it's the time of day as well. You know, we know how important timing is with margin fishing. I think this is gonna be another chunky F1. I haven't had to refeed, never had to bosh it again with a cage. It's just the pellets. Just the pellets that are going in the feeder have kept the peg ticking over. Another very lively fish, there we go, shaking the hook out in the net. Let's get that out of the way. Lovely fish, Just popping by. Well, these have definitely been the trickiest F1s I've had to try and catch, certainly on running line tactics anyway, but it's been a really interesting session. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Caught loads of fish, had to work hard for them but uh, it's been a, a very, very enjoyable session. Hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you want to see more videos from this channel, and I look forward to seeing you next time.